Okay, great. So we can redo those first experiments uh, later on in Wizard Lab Revisited if need be. Um, but anyway, so now the last one that we're going to do is we're going to do one more small pile and look at the effects of water again. Uh, but this time I'm going to start moisturizing it and getting it so that it's at the same amount of saturation as it was before in the other experiment. Okay, so it's still pretty stable, but as we keep adding water, we start to see that it's destabilizing. Can you guys see that? I'm gonna reset. So it's really collapsing down. So if we add too much water, it also destabilizes. All right. Great. So that is all the slope stability experiments that we'll be doing. Um, before we move on to a quick clay behavior demonstration, does anyone have any questions? Okay, great, awesome. Thank you all for taking notes. Uh, we can move this aside now. Okay, now we're gonna look at, so that was all sand, and now we're gonna look at clay. So we have a graduated cylinder here just with a bunch of water. And hopefully you all can see this pretty well, but I have a handful of dried clay here. So this is clay that's been wet and then dried in an oven. So there's no moisture left in it, but it's really solid. Like it's hard to break this apart with my hands. Um, I wish you could feel the texture, but if you have clay from that packet at home, feel free to feel what it feels like um, in its unhardened form. And as I put this in water, uh, please watch to see what happens to the clay. Um, I'll try to get this as close as I can. It's going to go pretty quick, but. Can you tilt down? Yeah, so you actually want to watch it not just at the bottom, but as it's going down. It's pretty fast. Yeah, it's definitely pretty quick. Mm -hmm. And then we can put it at the bottom too. But let's do this first. So, first watch it as it's dropping, and then we'll tilt it to the bottom. All right, so. All right, let me just hold this up. I think that will be better. Let's see. Let's see. Um, the camera quality might not be the best, but what's happening is that layers of this clay are just falling off and they're expanding and coming off in the water. Um, so you can see all these bubbles are getting released as well. Hopefully you can see that a little bit. And layers of the clay are just like on their own accord falling off and almost like sheets of paper. So that's something that's pretty interesting. But if we take sand and do the same thing as we just saw when we put sand uh, in underwater, sand does not have that same behavior. So that's one way that clay and sand are very different. Um, also, if you both have sand in clay at home, you can see that uh, when sand is wet, it doesn't have much strength, right? It's like really wet and soft. Uh, but when clay is wet and then dried, and, and if we were to dry this out, the sand would just take its original dry shape again. But when the clay dries, it locks together somehow and forms this really hard, like, honestly, I couldn't break this apart with my hands. I was trying to earlier. so. Uh, it's really, really strong. Um, so it's the same process, like wetting the, the soil and then drying it out, but it results in two very different end results. All right. Uh, so the next one that we're going to talk about is called uh, dilatancy. So I am going to quickly share my screen again just to show an image um, from the PowerPoint. So dilatancy is the effect 
right here, if you've ever experienced when you're walk walking on the beach near the water, but not quite at the water. Uh, and when you step on the water or you step on the ground, the sand takes on a different uh, moisture right where you step. Or when you step and water comes up. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Okay, so we're gonna try to show you the same thing, hopefully. Um, I can actually just fix this. This is gonna be hard to show on screen, but we're gonna try. Okay, this will be hard to show on screen, but we are gonna try our best. Did I bring yeah. No, it's okay. I don't wanna get sand on. Okay, can you guys see my hand pretty well? So when I tap it, uh, it's very hard to tell, but the water is coming up through the sand and coming up to the top. And that's due to the vibration. Um, but if I do the, sorry? You see it dripping from your hand, that's clear. Right, yeah, so it's, it's similar. Um, but when I do the same thing with clay, that effect does not happen. Uh, so if I were to take clay and wet it and put it in my hand and shake it, the water would not be coming out. Um, and so, again, we want to think about like what might make sand and clay so different that putting them through the same process is going to lead to some pretty different results. And what is it about the two different materials that like gives them these really different properties? Okay, so the next experiment is pretty fun. Just one second while I clean my hand off. Okay. I want to make a comment. Maybe you can repeat Anna's experiments with your fine yeah. sand and with your white kaolin clay. And you can see the difference. Just wet them both and then shake them, tap your, your palms. Uh, and you can see that the sand is starting to sh uh, look shiny because water is coming out. Whereas it doesn't happen with clay. So uh, we're gonna take you over somewhere else, take you on a journey through the lab room right now and go over to a vacuum hose that we have. So uh, Pasquale, Pasquale, do you wanna do this one? Sure. You can do that. Okay. Oh, shoot. Okay. So, here, yeah, I got it. Um, we have a glove. I'm not sure if you also received a glove in your packages or not. Um, but we just have a latex glove here, and it's filled with sand, the same type of sand we were using before for the slope stability experiment. And all we've done is like filled a glove with sand. You can see. It's very pliable, kind of seems like a kid's toy or something, but that's all that it is. And so it's very loose um, and it's just out. And then what we have is a vacuum hose here. And what we're going to do is put the vacuum hose, you can put it all the way in, in and then form a seal just with my hand is plenty. You can let go. Um, and so there's a vacuum hose inside the glove now. And I'm going to turn this on and it's going to suck all of the air out. Okay, it's going to be a little bit loud, just as a heads up. Okay, so now that we have this seal, there's no air left. And Again, this is hard to tell, but this is now rock solid. Like it's, we can bend it a little bit just at the edge because the air didn't fully come out here, but it's like really rock solid. And before where it was pliable, this is now like a solid like sculpture. If we were being more dramatic, part of the lab experiment directions say that you can break a pane of glass with this, but we thought that probably wasn't the safest thing to do, but it is truly like rock solid. So, but if we release the seal, it goes back to being completely pliable. And so just something to think about there. 
you know, we didn't do anything else. All we did was take the air out. And why is that happening? Why is sand so much stronger when we've taken all the air out? Okay. So before we move on to our last experiment, does anyone have any questions? What was the name of the last experiment you just did? Uh, it's just called the glove experiment. <laughs> Uh, and I will send out the slides that have the name of each experiment on them as well, too. Okay, so this last one, it is the first time we've done it, so everything should work, but just a heads up. So we're going to go back to this vibrational table. I should have gotten this. It's fine. Um, yeah. And so what we have here, let me pick up my laptop and show you all. I got it is um it's just a tray of soil we have a weight on top here but other than that it's just looks like normal ground it's filled probably about an inch and a half up to the top um actually maybe what could work is if you hold it so that it's angled yeah. down yeah. okay so we're gonna have as well is our laptop stand here um <laughs> thank you and just gonna hold it up. And we're gonna turn on this vibrational table and watch what happens. And this experiment is called liquefaction. So if you've ever heard that term before, maybe you know what to expect. Yeah, slowly. You can see it's starting to work. And also, just hit it. Maybe that'll be better. And then, because this is quite a lot of sand and not a super hot, or maybe. Oh, there you go. We're vibrating it more and more. So it did take a while, but there was a buried ping pong ball and a weight on top of the surface. And um, hopefully you guys can see, can you bring it up? There's all this liquid, there's all this water that has appeared on the edges. And so what we did before this lab was that we put a small layer of water at the bottom and then we filled it up with sand so that you couldn't see the water anymore. So it looked dry on the top, but there was water underneath. Uh, we also buried this ping pong ball and put the weight on top. And so what happened with the vibration was that the water appeared, the ping pong ball rose to the top, very light and empty, just filled with air. 
and the weight completely sunk underwater. Did everyone see that? Anyone have any questions? That was awesome, TAs. I think it worked. Was, it worked. <laughs> it worked. I was kind of worried that it wouldn't work. Yeah, we weren't sure with the size of the sand tray and how much the table could vibrate, but I'm glad it did. And then the last thing I want to show you um, to share my screen again, it's all good, um, is does this look like the weight at all to you guys? <laughs> so if this building represents the weight, what might a ping pong ball represent? Anyone have any ideas? A car? Like natural gas? Yeah, yeah, like an underground container of some kind, right? Gas is one. Uh, what other underground containers might there be? Water ducts. What'd you say? Aqueducts. Mm -hmm. And I heard someone else said like a water tank. Absolutely. Another one, it's a little gross, but sewage. Mm -hmm. That's also typically tanks underground, right? Um, I don't know, depending if you had like city sewage or your own. Um, like I know where I grew up, we had our own tank buried underground somewhere in our property. So definitely wouldn't want that to bubble up to the surface. But when we applied that vibration, something happened to the soil and the water in it. And we know that there's underground water everywhere, right? Based on the kind of soil it was, which was a uh, sand and a pretty fine grain sand, something happened there. So just something to think about and to start, really it's important to just rec record your observations, but also to maybe start to think, what was it that made this happen? Like what different factors and properties and material properties had to come together? Okay, well, that is the end of our lab today. Um, thank you all for bearing with us as we navigate a virtual uh, geotech lab. But um, does anyone have any other questions or Professor Borja, if there's anything you'd like to add, of course. Question, um, so does the vibration, the vibration table were you changing the amplitude of the vibration or were you changing the frequency of the vibration? That's a great question. I believe it was just the amplitude that was changing. So at first, the initial setting I had wasn't enough uh, to generate the results we were looking for. Um, I will say that that wasn't on purpose. We didn't, since this is the first time we ran the experiment, we weren't sure what the best amplitude would be. And then we just made the vibrations uh, increase in amplitude. I guess something important to add to that is that, yeah, we increased the, the amplitude, but that really just, it just made it happen quicker. It would eventually happen with the yeah. lower amplitude. So like, if you relate that to an actual building, like it eventually can happen. Mm -hmm. I was wondering, cause like uh, my like hypothesis was like, if the amplitude of the vibration was enough to shift the like um, grains of the soil, then there would be like a sieve motion basically and so then things that were of higher density would fall through because they would be less stable on each level and then yeah same. that's a great yeah. hypothesis yeah but yeah um it but was probably like, hard if it's lower if it's lower amplitude then like if it's going to happen eventually then would it be like um like depending on uh, I don't know. Would the weight, like, would the wave of the vibration still be larger than the grain of the sand or, like, at the setting that you had it at? Or would it be, like, you have to break down the structural integrity of the, like, bonds of the mixture itself? Yeah, so um, I'm not going to say too much just to not give it away, but I think you're thinking definitely along some great lines there. Um, so, yeah, so one thing I will note is that when we had the lower amplitude, it was happening. It was probably hard to tell from the camera, but water was starting to bubble up, uh, but it was happening much slower, just like Pascal mentioned. Um, 
then when we made the amplitude higher, it required less amount of time of shaking for that effect to happen. So I would take note of that, but um, I think you guys are definitely thinking along the right line. Awesome, are there any other questions? So in terms of the lab report, it will be due next Friday, um, probably by like 1 p.m. I'll put the timeline just so that it's a week later. Um, if you, we office hours start next week, so feel free to come by with questions about the course, homework, lab reports, anything. Um, and yeah, I believe that's everything we have. And one last time, this lab report, you don't need to follow the completely strict format because it's a bit, it's just observational in nature, um, but moving forward, you will follow that format in handout number three. Thank you. Why don't we give thumbs up for the TAs? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks everyone. For the wizards. <laughs> thank you. Bye everyone, have yeah, a great Friday. Bye, thank you so much. So I had a question. Um, I keep getting stuck on the second problem in the P set. Um,